fellow citizens, the executive director, media fraternity, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very delighted today to announce that Uganda will on the 15th of May 2021 join the Global Fraternity to commemorate the International Day of the Family. The United Nations, through its resolution 47, stroke 237, on September 20th, 1993, proclaimed the year 1994 the International Year of the Family. Ever since then, May 15th was dedicated as an annual observancy of the importance of the family worldwide. Uganda has commemorated this day since 2000. This year, the day will be marked scientifically in Kampala on the 14th of May 2021 at Fairway Hotel. This year's theme is COVID-19 pandemic and the family in Uganda, challenges, opportunities, and lessons learned. The theme explores the effects of COVID-19 on the family's institution, appreciates the contribution towards the fight of the pandemic, takes advantage of the opportunities and reflects on the lessons learned from this situation, analyzes the challenges and develop mechanisms to address them. As you are aware, COVID-19 has affected institutions differently since it was declared as a global pandemic and a public health crisis. It has affected the family institution severely. During the 2014 National Population and Housing Census, there were, there were 7.3 million households. They are projected to be about 9 million households by mid-2020 that were all put under the lockdown. And over 15 million school-going children were sent back home during the lockdown. Parents were required to embrace the virtual learning that was a challenge to most families in the rural areas. COVID-19 was a strong shock for the families that lost income due to the abrupt school closure, loss of jobs, and the widespread threat of illness and death. COVID-19 crisis did not affect all families equally, but caused particular harm to children of low income and less educated parents and for preschool age children who were especially sensitive to early childhood development input. The school's closure did not only create tension, but also on the other side, substantially increased the time that parents, especially mothers, spend with their children. For school children, school closure and learning interruptions threatened children's learning and adjustment to family environment. According to police report of 2020, there were indications that 8.9 decrease in the volume of crime Beg your pardon. According to the police report 2020, there were indica indications that 8.9 increase in the volume of crimes were reported. 19,593 cases were reported in 2020, but the defilement still posed a very big problem to police. About 13,682 children were defiled, majority of whom were girls. The economic impact on the movement restrictions, lockdown, and halting of economic activities could have both immediate and lasting implications for Ugandan families, 
particularly for the poorest and the most vulnerable. The changes arise from COVID-19. The changes arising from COVID-19 can also have a direct effect on the level of distress parents and children experience arising from social isolation due to stay at home orders, including physical and social distancing from their friends, schools, and changes from their usual daily routine. Commemorating this day during the current situation gives us an opportunity to advocate for the protection, promotion, and preservation of family institution for national development. In addition, messages on parenting were developed and aired out on radios and TV, provision of psychosocial support to the affected families and persons were implemented to strengthen the family during COVID-19, and I want to thank the media fraternity for having taken the lead in disseminating information to the parents and children during the lockdown period. The government also provided food and relief for aid against COVID-19 to supplement food in urban areas. The provision of mosquito nets and medical supplements, especially for those living with terminal illnesses, was done to sustain lives. Under the Ministry of Education and Sports, special consideration was made to grant girls who got pregnant during COVID-19 an opportunity to go back to school to ensure that an another chance was provided for them to live a better life in future. As we celebrate the International Day of the Family, let each one of us reflect on how together we can mitigate the challenges brought about by COVID-19 and revive the dignity of the family. Address social evils, promote peace and reconciliation, including elimination of gender-based violence, and see appropriate approaches to make the family resilient to shocks like COVID-19. We want to wish you a joyful International Day of the Family and a successful National Year of the Family 2021. Thank you. Ordinary person will commemorate this day as all the national days have been commemorated because the whole of this year and last year we have commemorated national days scientifically. And we use the media to voice these concerns and raise activism campaign. And this is why we are here to ensure that the ordinary person is aware using the media platform. We cannot afford to risk the ordinary person or anybody else. And that is why we are doing it scientifically. But the message that we have been airing on media for the whole year, actually two years now, will continue. And we have come to encourage you to continue with the spirit of mobilizing the population using the media platform. As we talk right now, many people have adopted the system. And even if you use scientific measures or mechanisms to establish whether people are informed, you will get to realize that even in the gardens, they go with their radios and they are on TV. When time comes for news, I see groups of people gathering, even in Owino, Chikubo, to listen and watch and ensure that they are informed. So people have adopted the system of getting information through the radio, and that is how the media, pers the local person or ordinary person is going to get this information. And we are doing what it takes to advocate, because peaceful coexistence requires a mindset that is convinced about respecting each other and choosing to live with each other harmoniously. So our advocate campaign has succeeded. Yes, 
there was supply of food to some communities in the urban areas, especially within Kampala. I'm convinced a number of families received food. And if they did not receive from, through government, at least the spirit of uh, supporting one another was inculcated. And we did not see death of starvation. So I'm convinced that the message and the mechanisms really worked. Increased divorce, gender-based violence, loss of lives. We have been here several times to condemn them and we shall continue to condemn them. But I'm happy that the population has realized and they do report. The reporting mechanisms have been intensified and the people are now fighting for their rights. That is why whenever such distress occurs, in one way or another we get to learn and we get to know. We have a Saudi helpline which has supported us to collect data. Right now, every district, the police has information about how many gender-based violence cases have been reported. And as we move forward, we have requested and supported the local governments to develop a mechanism and action plans have been developed to reduce gender-based violence. The most recent one launched on the eve of the National Women's Day celebration was the Nekasese, where we found 3,845 children had been defiled and others forced into early marriage. But the local government in Nekasese, on its own accord, was able to develop an action plan to end child marriages. As we talk, we have held several meetings with the cultural and institu cultural institutions, the 14 of them which are gazetted, for the cultural leaders to denounce early marriages and forced marriages. And we think that is a big plus. Once our cultural leaders speak to it, then it is easier to achieve since we know that culture had a big bearing on forced and early marriages. For the lost lives, we certainly condemn them, condemn those perpetuators, and I think 80% of the perpetuators have already uh, been taken to prison, and the law, they are responding to the law accordingly. This year seems to be the first time we get more cases that have been concluded on gender-based violence. Judicial has given us a report that they have concluded 6,000 cases in only this year, when we are just in May, half the year. This had never happened before, because last year, it was about 4,000 cases that were concluded. Right now, as we talk, half the year is 6,000 cases. We appreciate the support the, the Minister of Justice has put in place to ensure that we respond to cases of gender-based violence and bring them to an end. I thank you.